right? Um, triple quotation also has more benefits. It's not just you can use single and double quotation uh, in one sentence. You can also do this if you want to write something in multiple lines, because that's what we did here, if you recall, right? So we did triple quotation and write this in multiple lines for multiple comments lines. Now we can use the same trick. So we can do print and we do triple right there, you see. And here you can write whatever you want in that order. You can do one, two, three, let's say four. Also, something off in my F. I'll fix it later. Uh, here we go. And you basically, you can write this in a single line. You can write other things like that. Let's go. Well, how about if you do quotation only, you can whatever you write would be in one line. So you're going to go one, two, even you press enter three, everything would be. All right, it's my bad. You see, P not supposed to be capital. So Python is a case-sensitive language. See, 1, 2, and 3 basically are kind of next to each other in one line. So double quotation does not work in this matter. All right, now let's start with uh, some variables. What is a variable? Variable is something that you store uh, basically your values or anything you want in it. For example, let's say you're 24, five years old, you wanna keep that number somewhere. So you're gonna say age equals to, let's put 25. You don't need to declare any type or anything like that in Python, that's the beauty of it. It's a lot of flexibility like that. Um, Let's say you have a room number 503. Uh, you want to set, I don't know, money. Let's say your bill amount is $12.75. Or you can store your name. So let's say for the name, anything you type is a string. Is you can just use it the same format. So we're going to do that and have your name. You can have your last name. Again, can I use double? Of course. So you can use Akbar. Right. So here, let's print those. How do you print those? So these are the value you have and you want to show it as an output to your program. Basically, you're just going to print H and if you run it, here we go, you see your 25 here. Similarly, you can go print your name and you see the program has this as a variable, so you see the V here, so that means it's variable. And you're gonna select that and run it, and then you see you see your my name here. Then print last name, here we go. Just run that and you see that. So whatever you actually stored can be printed out as well. So you don't need to just print on this shot. You can do it again. So let's say if you find you change something, let's say you change your age, the variable is just you instead of 25, now you show 27. Let me write that. All right. So you see, variable it means it varies, it changes if you want. Uh, but the program just print whatever is in that variable name, which is in this case in age is 27. It was 25 before. Uh, so you can do all those. Um, you can print combination of those. Means you can say print here. My name is right, and simply gonna go comma and name. That's it. So you actually print this string, which is we learned, plus whatever name is. 
So in this case, I'm going to run that and say, okay, my name is Hassan. If you change this to, I don't know, Hess, then you just change to my name is Hess. So that's the kit. Um, you also can do with the numbers, doesn't matter. You can say, I am, comma, age, comma, again, years old. So in that case, boom, I'm 27 years old. The thing you're going to realize, you can, you can have an extra space here. It's Python variables automatically when you print it, it throw a space, so you don't need to do it. Some of the programs, it doesn't do that, unless it's Java or something, or C even. You're going to consider the space. But uh, the beauty of this, the variables actually considered with space, so they don't need to do that. Um, what if I want to ask, you can manipulate the variables. Let's say you want to add some numbers. So I've set the variable A, 5, and B, again, 3. And you want to manipulate those numbers. Let's say you want to have variable C, which is, shows you A plus B. That's how you add. Therefore, if you print that, 5 plus 3 is 8, so you can go C, and that shows show me eight let's run it here we go so I have the eight so you can add can I let's do do multiplication so I'm gonna go D equals to let's do eight times that's how you do multiplication B and let's print D here All right, you see 15. What else we need to do? All right, the next order of business obviously is a division. So if I do A, B, C, D, E equals to, let's say, A divided by B, which is like 1 point something, 1.5 or something like that. Let's find out. Print E. Let's see what I got. Here we go. It's 1.666667. We're going to teach you how to get rid of all those extra digits. Uh, it's too soon now, but that's not a really clean output. We're going to learn how to clean it. If you do, since I'm at it, if you do A, B, C, D, E, F equals A divided, divided by B, this is a shortcut. Let's comment that. This gives you uh, the integer or whole number of the division what I mean by that ah. here we go division ah, what am I doing Sorry, guys, I'm just doing this in one shot. Sometimes things happen. Um, so what I mean by that, so here, in this case, I have 1.6667. Just show you one. So if I print F, you'll see you're just going to have the results. One. Here we go. Uh, let's, let's try something else. Let's make this 10. So E going to give me something. There we go. So just get this number and give it to you as a whole number. This is called a floor in mathematics. We have seal. Let's say I have a number here. Let's say I have a number 2.7. Um, the seal would be 2 and the uh, floor, sorry, the floor would be 2 and the seal would be 3 in this case. So if you want to use the, get the floor in, or seal, you can use mathematical uh, functions too, but this is an easy way to do that. Uh, what else? Uh, in multiplication, A, B, C, D, F, G, you can do that, um, which is equals to, let's say, A, instead of to the 
basically double star or double multiplication b this is means to the power of what I, what I mean by that in this case would be 10 to the power of 3 so let's try that here we go I expect the thousand I got the thousand what else left Oh, mod modulus, modulus, what is modulus? Modulus gives you the remainder of things. So let's say I want to get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H equals to uh, A modulus. Modulus is like a percentage of B. In that case, 10 divided by 3 is 3 and the remainder is 1. So H would be uh, 1 in this case. Let's try that. And that should give me. So if I want to add stuff to this because it gets confusing, I can do this. Let's make it professional. We're going to say the summation, sum of comma, like we'll close this, comma, a, comma, and comma, b. So whatever value a and b has, going to be comma equal to comma c that's how you use the combination of those uh, d would be uh, the multi oh. all right the multi uh, typo here multiplication of Again, A, and let's say B, calls to A, B, C, D. You got the idea, so you can, let's try those. All right, what I forgot, oh, the comma. Same tax here, right? Great. Uh, here we go. So the summation of 10 and 3 is 13. The multiplication of 10 and 3 is 30. Uh, let's, you guys then can actually do it for E yourself and F as well. So try to manipulate those. Here we go. I'm going to do H. All right. Um, I'll go with, uh, the modulus. Of A and B is H. Okay, so in that case, here we go. Ten and three gives you one because ten divided by three is three times three nine. Ten minus nine is one. So the good part is, if I change this to 11, this is going to give me 2. So everything adapts itself. The good part of the variable is I don't need to go change all those lines accordingly. You guys try this 3 and see if you actually get it done or not. Um, next order of business.